Okay. <coughs> so let us uh, start with what are known as hydrostatic calculations. We already um, mentioned a little bit about hydrostatic curves, hydrostatic calculations. Okay. Now, um, the first thing that we need to calculate, the first hydrostatic calculation that you will need to perform is to find the water plane area. Now, in some ways while doing some of the problems, I have done lot of this, but I did not mathematically give the de exactly do it, okay, the details I did not do last in those problems. So, we will do that in this uh, chapter. So, the first thing you are calculating is the water plane area. Note that it is always written as A w, it is the water plane area uh, and as you know it is the area at the draft. So, where the water line is cutting the ship, what is the area that is known as the water plane area? It is twice, right? y is the half ordinate and uh, y dx will give you the integral y dx will give you the total area and twice that will give you the both the sides of the ship port and starboard. So, this is the um, integral equation for A w. Now, this we rewrite it as Okay. This is uh, the same equation, the integral equation we are writing it in a discretized form. dx is the distance between two stations is delta L and uh, um, this integral is always written as a Sim Simpson's rule or a trapezoidal rule and this alpha i represents that multiplier either the trapezoidal multiplier or the Simpson's multiplier. So, it is the same thing. So, it is this uh, integral only. So, this is the first one. So, you are actually integrating this between a water line n 1 and n 2, uh, the station n 1 and n 2 and therefore, uh, let us say that the it is probably not n 2, let us you can even call it n station equals 1, i equals 1 to some n in to avoid confusion because what we are really doing here is this means x is going from x equal to a which is most likely x equal to 0 and it is going up to the total length, L is the length of the ship, dx, uh, uh, x is going from 0 to L, the total length of the ship. So, in this case, that is it is going from A to B, it goes from station 1 to the last station or the station at the aft to the station at the forward point. So, that will give you the total water plane area. Um, okay, then next one is Now, you should know this, what is meant by a transverse axis and what is a longitudinal axis. In fact, this part that is this, uh, this naming of transverse, we will see which is coming next, transverse moment of inertia, transverse axis, longitudinal moment of inertia, longitudinal axis, it is a little confusing, okay, when you, um, especially first time when you are doing it, you will definitely be confused. So, at the time of exam at least you should be clear even if you are okay even if you are confused which is which now at the time of exam be clear which is the this you should know all, at all times means if you have the ship like this if this is the length of the ship this axis is always the longitudinal axis and this is the transverse axis okay therefore what are we doing here we are finding the moment of the water plane area this is the water plane area let's say this is the water plane area that means the sh this is the region where the draft is cutting the uh, water line uh, is cutting the uh, the water line is cutting the air, it is reaching the air. So, um, the moment about a transverse axis, this is a transverse axis. So, what are we doing? We are actually doing the finding the moment about this point of the water plane area. Okay? This is the first problem. We can do one thing, we, we take the transverse axis at the origin. Let us take this one. Let us call this as station 0, which is the origin the station 0 we will call as origin and uh, therefore, your moment of this water plane area becomes moment m 
becomes twice x y d x. It is clear now why it should be x, x is the horizontal distance of each, uh, each point and y is the this y dx is giving you if you do integral y dx you are actually giving the water plane area and x into y dx is giving you that moment okay so this again we will write it in the um, discretized form or the um, discrete form that is so it becomes 2 into sigma again let's call it from i equal to 1 to n alpha i x i y i delta l Okay, this can be written like this, and where de delta l is representing that dx. So this is now this you can write as. Now how can you write x i? We have seen. Let's assume that in the simplest case, uh, x i is actually x of each station. You can call it x i. You can call it like this: j i into delta l. Okay, j is the number of station and delta l is that distance between the station. So, 1 into delta l will give you x 1, 2 into delta l will give you x 2 like that. Okay, You are getting x i. So, this equation itself we can write as 2 into sigma i equals 1 to n alpha i j i y i into delta l square. Okay. This is just some just taken that delta l outside. So, this becomes your um, now why is it written like this? It is written like this because this delta l square is a constant, it can be taken outside. So, your idea is to find this summation, and we have already discussed how to find summations, how we are going to draw tables, and how do you find the total areas. So, that we will come to next, but that is the goal of writing it like this. This sigma is actually representing that table, sum summation in that column. So, uh, there is a, a moment of area. Then, how will you get the x coordinate of the center of flotation? We will see this. This is the third one. Coordinate. The meaning of the x coordinate of the center of flotation is, I have already told you, center of flotation means the centroid of the area, water plane area. So, you have this area, you want the centroid of that water plane area. So, how will you find it? You will do moment of that water plane area divided by the water plane area, right? Okay. So, that is that will give you the centroid of flotation. The x coordinate of the center of flotation, let us call it x f is equal to m x what we have done here m x divided by a w. Now, these uh, notations do not change in your in your um, in this course at least do not change it. Let a w always represent the water plane area m x this moment, because there are lot of m's that come m x you will see some m t different m's will come. So, each of them note denoted by the same uh, same letter itself. So, this represents 2 into sigma alpha i j i y i into delta l square divided by 2 into what was a, a was defined as 2 into sigma alpha i y i into delta l. So, 1 delta l will cancel, 2 will cancel. So, this gives you the x coordinate of the center of flotation. Now, um, we will do examples that will explain it more clearly, but you can see what what do you re, how do you create the remember this is what you are calling as lcf okay longitudinal center of flotation this xf is what you are calling as lcf now um, okay so this is thing then um, this is one summation a uh, summation of one column in a table which i'll draw the table then it will be clear Okay, so this is the expression for xf. Then um, that's what the the notation is that xf is always called as longitudinal center of flotation. So remember that. Then um, now there is another the fourth one is.
Now, the fourth one is a transverse moment of inertia of a water plane area. Um, okay, now this is actually transverse moment of inertia. What is transverse moment of inertia? It is the moment of inertia about this is the confusing part. Transverse moment of inertia means the moment of inertia about the longitudinal axis. I will explain this again. It sounds a little confusing, but the meaning is that why is the transverse moment of inertia and why is it about a longitudinal axis? It's because of this. Transverse moment of inertia means moment of inertia in this direction. That is obviously transverse. Means if this is the longitudinal direction, this is the transverse direction, uh, this is the center line in the middle. That center line is called as a longitudinal axis. Okay. Now, you want the transverse moment of inertia means the moment of inertia in this direction. So obviously from where do you calculate? You calculate it based on this line in the center. So transverse moment of inertia is the moment of inertia about the longitudinal axis. Is it clear? Or should I say this again? That is means what I am saying is what you need is transverse moment of inertia means the moment of inertia in this direction. Okay, the ship is like this. Okay, This is the aft of the ship, this is the forward of the ship and this is one side and this is the starboard side. Then so if this is the center line, this line is called as a longitudinal axis. So what do we want? We want the transverse moment of inertia. Transverse moment of inertia is a moment of inertia by multiplying distances in this direction. It is a transverse moment of inertia, means in this direction. So from where do we take the distance? From the center line. So it is the moment of inertia about the center line. Is it, should, should I say, that? okay, I think it's clear now. So this is the transverse moment of inertia. It is the moment of inertia about the center line. So these things do not, that is why I said it, you keep forgetting this thing which is, but remember this is the longitudinal axis, there is no doubt about that. Longitudinal and transverse direction should be very clear, longitudinal axis is clear, if transverse axis is clear then you can just think transverse axis, transverse moment of inertia has to be in this direction, moment of inertia in this direction. So you, you are actually needing the distance in this direction. So this distance can only be from some fixed line like this, which should be your longitudinal axis. Okay. So that is the meaning of transverse moment of inertia like this. I mean we can draw it here. Let us assume that the ship is this. Okay. This is your ship. This is the center line of the ship and this is what we are calling as a longitudinal axis. And so what are we multiplying? We are actually finding the moment of inertia, let us say of small area like this you take a small area of thickness dx of length dx, you are actually finding the moment of inertia of this area about this point. So you have to multiply a y here. Okay. You take the area and you multiply it with y. That is actually going to give you the uh, moment of inertia. Now again this is always written like this i t. I t represents transverse moment of inertia about the longitudinal axis or transverse moment of inertia about the center line. This is the transverse moment of inertia. Okay. Now um, looking at this figure, let us say that this distance, um, let us say that this length is y. Okay, this length is y and um, uh, so what will be the moment of inertia of this? Uh, let us consider it to be a rectangle, means we have taken only dx, so let us consider it, it to be a rectangle okay, because it is a small length. So d i t will be 2 y cubed into dx divided by 12. So it is a rectangle and it is the moment of inertia uh, about um, this point that, that you know already. If you are finding the moment of inertia about this, it is this length cubed divided by this length uh, into that length. So this total length is 2y, 2y cubed into dx by 12. That gives you di and integral of this, that is i t will be integral of this 2y cubed by 12 dx, integral of this. So uh, i t will be this, which is which we will write in a discrete form, which is as i t is equal to um, So 2 cubed is 8, 8 by 12. So it becomes 2 by 3, 2 by 3 into integral y cube dx, which is equal to 2 by 3 into 
sigma let us start from i equal to 0 uh, or you can start from i equal to 1 means you are calling it station 0 you are calling it station 1 it is ok into up to n into alpha i into y cubed y i cubed into delta l ok. Um, so, you have um, I think it is clear I do not need to explain this again. So, so you are taking 8 y cube by 12. Yes, 8 by 3 is 4 by 8 by 12 is 4 by 3 no. Ah, yeah, this is 2 y cubed. This one, right? Yeah, this is 2 y cubed. So, it is um, 2 by 3. Okay, then, um, so this is what I was explaining last time, but I did not write down the equation as such. I already told you that how do you find the moment of inertia about the center line of the ship? How did we do it last time? I'll, in case I know that there is, I mean, we are going, we are covering a lot of portions. We have a lot of, lot of things, interrelated things, which uh, kind of sometimes creates confusion. Like, for instance, this one, um, we, I already told you how you are going to calculate the moment of inertia about the center line. That it was like this that I mentioned there. We'll do that, but means you'll write a table like this. station 0, station 1 like that, stations like this you will write, then you will write a um, um, Simpson's multiplier 1, 4, 2, 4 or like that, then you will write, um, then here you are writing the half ordinate cubed, okay. We were doing a half ordinate cube and um, then uh, this is half or net cube and here we are doing a, if you remember we called it a function of moment, called it a function of moment and um, this was actually given to be, let us name this column 1, this column 2, column 3. So, this column 4 is equal to column 2 into column 3, okay. I mentioned like this function of moment. Now, you do this you get a summation here of, of different stations, sigma function of moment. So, this i you are getting is i about the center line, which is i about the center longitudinal axis, which is known as the transverse moment of inertia, which is i t. So, this i t is equal to, so this sim sigma function of moment, I mean this is how I define there divided by uh, no into uh, multiplied by uh, it should be 2 by 3 into h okay this is actually the this you have to well you can derive it you, but you have to remember at least okay this final expression. so this function of moment is this this is really your function of that moment alpha i into y i cube Again, I will repeat alpha i represents the Simpson's multiplier or the trapezoidal multiplier and y i q y i is representing the half ordinate, it is half the distance from the center line, half ordinate. So, half ordinate cube, so that, that is what we have done here, this function of moment, this function of moment is, what is it, 4 is equal to 2 into 3, 2 is Simpson's multiplier into half ordinate cube, Simpson's multiplier into half ordinate cube and we are summing it up, we are summed it up and you are multiplying it with delta l which is h in this case into 2 by 3. So, this is how you get your moment of inertia about the center line. This you will have to do for the exam, some problem will be there to calculate the moment of inertia about the center line. So, this formula should be firmly in your mind. Of course, it is very easy to derive it, just I guess it is better to just remember this method of derivation, um, making this uh, rectangle and you find out the i about this line. Okay, then okay, now we can have the as I said, this is the where the confusion can start. That is, I will write it 5 the moment of inertia about a t 
transverse axis. This is another one which is slightly different that is here we are doing the moment of inertia of the area about a transverse axis which is a transverse axis. Suppose this is the ship. Okay. Suppose this represents the ship. What we found in the previous section was transverse mom the moment of inertia about the longitudinal axis which is called the transverse moment of inertia. Now we are finding the moment of inertia about a transverse axis in this axis which is known as a longitudinal moment of inertia. So this is known as okay so this is known as a longitudinal moment of inertia now this is a transverse axis passing through the origin of coordinates we say origin of coordinates by origin of coordinates we mean station 0 that is what we usually are calling it as to be x equal to 0 x equal to 0 is it doesn't have to be but right now i am calling x equal to 0 to be the um, mean, means coordinate system is yours to choose we can always choose wherever you want and we people do choose it differently for example, okay, that is the next one. But right now, let us assume that x equal to 0 represents um, the origin. So, you are having the moment of inertia about a transverse axis passing through the station origin, station through the origin, which is the first station. Okay, that is known as the longitudinal moment of inertia. And it is usually designated as Iy. Previously, the previous one was It. This one is Iy. Now, uh, in your problems, what we problems, all those problems that you have done, I do not think we have ever done a longitudinal moment of inertia, means what we are going doing now, we have never calculated a longitudinal moment of inertia. So, so just as a aid to help your exam, so that you do not get confused where to take the moment of inertia, you are never going to use this one, means you are never going to do this. You are only going to do the previous moment of inertia, what we have done so far. So, of course, you have to know it, but know that your moment of inertia always has to be about the center line. You are, because I have never done any problem dealing with trim. Trim is where this moment becomes important. When you take the moment about this transverse axis, it is actually to do this move, uh, this motion. I am not, I have not discussed trim at all. Very, very, uh, and we won't be doing most of trim. So, you are only interested in heels. So, you are only interested in this i. So, note that you are going to find always i t and not i y so so for the exam find only it okay um, then this is defined as i y is equal to 2 into x into um, what will it be x into what was the x y dy x y dx okay it is the second moment of inertia so it's okay okay 2 into x square y dx okay so this is equal to in a discretized form it becomes <coughs> 2 uh, into sigma i equal to 0 to n x square can be written as alpha i x i squared into uh, y i into delta l okay i mean there is nothing to get confused in this discrete uh, dis uh, in this uh, Make, making this thing as discrete, discretizing it, that is um, 2 into, it is this 2 into x is of course the integral, one new term comes Simpson's multiplier. So, that alpha i into x square becomes x i squared, y becomes y i and dx is dl, delta l is the distance between two stations. So, this is the expression and to make it slightly simpler, this can be written as 2 into sigma i equal to 0 to n alpha i j i squared y i 
into delta L cubed. Is it clear? Means x i squared all I we have done here is So, x i is equal to j i into delta L means the station 2, the distance of the station 2 from uh, the origin is twice uh, the length between two stations. So, j i into delta L, so x i square is equal to j i square into delta L square or j i delta L whole square. Okay, so, this is your i y, just know this expression anyway, it is important, but you would not be solving it. Then so, this is a longitudinal moment of inertia. Um, now, you can you can also do a longitudinal moment of inertia. Um, this is about the origin of coordinates, which is station 0. Now, you can also find this the uh, moment of inertia about a um, about which point? The center of flotation. Um, center of flotation. Okay. Center of flotation. Actually, you know by now what is the center of flotation? It's the centroid of the water plane area. So, initially, you had at the beginning of the water plane area, that is at the halfmost point. Now, you don't have to do it about this axis i but you can do it about an axis i which is parallel to this but at the center of flotation that is also a longitudinal moment of inertia and in fact when you just say longitudinal moment of inertia you usually take it about that axis about the center of flotation and the axis through the center of flotation is called a barycentric axis it is a longitudinal axis i mean it's a transverse axis It is a transverse axis through the center of flotation. It is known as uh, the barycentric axis. Now, so this moment, moment of inertia, this moment of inertia about the barycentric axis, let us call it I L. Okay? Therefore, I L is will be equal to I y minus A w into x f squared. This is just coming from the basic definition of moment of inertia, which says that moment of inertia about any parallel axis is found out by using area of that of that area, I mean the area of that section into the distance squared. That using that, what is it called? It is a parallel axis theorem or something, no? Yeah. So, when you have using that equation, you get I about L which is i about the centroid. So, what is the x of that centroid? It is x f. It is the center of flotation. There is the x coordinate of the center of flotation, which is called as a longitudinal center of flotation, L c f. So, that is x f. And once you have that, a w into x f squared. So, this formula also, it will be useful to remember. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we have written a couple of uh, formulas. Th we can just apply it in one problem, and you will see how it is giving you the different moments of inertia and areas and all that. Um, now, some problem is given such that Okay, so I'll just. You are told what is the station number, and you are told. Oh, the trapezoid. Okay, you are given. So, uh, you are given a table which gives you these details, the station numbers. Like this, you are given the different station numbers. You are given the half ordinates, which means y, which is this distance. You are given the different half ordinates. Uh, okay, let's name them. 
this is 1, column 1, this is column 1, this is column 2, column 3. Now, in column 2, we write the trapezoidal multiplier. This time, we are using trapezoidal rule. So, um, you can do it as either as um, half 1, 1 like that or 1, 2, 2. So, this becomes half 1, 1 like that. Okay. So, uh, you have the trapezoidal multipliers. Now, we look at this equation. So, uh, we are we actually some of the things that we have derived here is one is this. This is one we need i y. Then we need i t, which is this. Okay. So our basic purpose in this in this problem is to find i t and i y. So i t, which is given by this formula. Okay, which we have done and i y which is given by this formula. So, these two things we need. Now, and uh, okay, you are also asked to find what is L C F and L C the okay, just the L C. So, you are finding um, i t i y and L C F three things. All right. Now, first, so what are the things that you need? to do this problem. So, this is what you are given. You are just given the station number and half ordinate. So, first you make the trapezoidal multiplier that column. Then you make a liver. The meaning of liver is is actually j i means the, um, the position of that station. I mean it is like uh, liver is actually what is the distance between stations? It is delta l. So, it goes like this. Liver goes like this 1 delta l. 2 delta L, 3 delta L, 4 delta L. So, this delta L is taken outside and is multiplied later and it is just lever is just 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, uh, what we first do is the origin we call it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and you will have for different stations you are going to have different levers. That is one column. This we will call as column 4. Then uh, functions of area. alpha i y i. Now, this is to find the total area, water plane area. Okay. So, that of, of you will have to find the water plane area. So, to find alpha i y i, again this is the expression for water plane area 2 into sigma this thing alpha i y i. So, you see here you have to do alpha i y i summation you have to get. So, you need alpha i y i as one column. So, so this will give you the water plane areas. So, this is um, uh, column 5. Then you have okay, where is it now to do where is i y i y ah, that is this thing. To do i y since you are asked to find i y you have to calculate alpha i x i y i delta l. I am not sure where I put the next half of it. This is actually can be written as Right, I wrote that somewhere. This this is the expression for uh, i y. To get i y, you need this expression. That means what do you need? You need alpha i j i square into y i. That to do that, that means see, you need j i square into y i. Therefore, this one. This is a function of moments. This is your six. Column six. So, what are we doing? Column 6 will be you have j i, you square j i, you multiply it with the area, uh, you multiply it with the half ordinate. So, alpha i is this one, this co uh, column, j i is this lever column squared into y i is this half ordinate column. So, multiplying that will give you another column of the function of uh, moments. This is to calculate, note that this is to calculate i y. So, in this you will be calculating i y. Then we need another column. 
so what what the next one is actually the one you will be using for your exams that is actually to calculate your it i have already told you it is very important you are though this problem we are doing it you will never be doing iy you will be only doing it so to calculate it i have already told you you will need to do half ordinate cubed half ordinate cube into alpha i okay so this is to find it which is in fact the most important in this which you will have to do for exam so this is it so half ordinate cube into alpha i now this is actually alpha i into y i cubed so this is another column alpha i comes from this which is your trapezoidal multiplier and y i cube is your half ordinate cubed so you have another column so this is your table so of course uh, to do a problem like this will take two or three hours you cannot do it in the exam just one small section of it like just the if i am given probably i give you some four or five stations four stations probably and i ask you to find the moment of inertia just to know that you know how to do it the method so that's all i can ask so you it cannot be this long this for example this problem is very long you cannot do it then so these are your columns and um, once you have these you have to do you are given delta l is the distance between stations whatever it is that is given then a w let's look at the formulas here you have the formula is given to this thing into delta l so here we do 2 into in this we in this we have alpha i by i this summation sigma okay this sigma let's call this sigma 1 this as sigma 2 and this as sigma 3 this represents the summation of all the all the elements in this column this is the summation of all this and summation of all this sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 so delta 2 into sigma 1 into delta l okay just doing this will give you the water plane area of that at that particular draft and then um, um, then your next problem is to find if you are tr trying to find it that will be again let us look at the formula for it it is this formula so this is your formula for it okay this one it is equal to 2 by 3 into so this we need so in this column we need this one alpha i y i cubed we need so this is your alpha i y i cube which is summed up to get sigma 3 okay means you have different elements you have added them up and you are getting sigma 3 so 2 by 3 into sigma 3 into uh, i think it's delta l delta l okay this will give you it the transverse moment of inertia which is the moment of inertia about the longitudinal axis that is the center line that is very important then so of course you have to be able to draw the table sum it up and you have to remember this formula also 2 by 3 this 2 by 3 term and all has to be remembered so 2 by 3 into sigma into delta l so best thing is not to by heart it it will be confusing because there are so many such terms best thing is to derive remember the derivation part so you just draw that center line you draw that rectangle you find the moment of inertia of that rectangle and so on okay then that is it then your next question is to find iy so we have to use the formula for iy this one which is 2 sigma xi this one this is better so 2 into sigma alpha i j i squared y i delta l cube so 2 into in this table this one alpha i alpha i j i square into y i alpha i j i square into y i this is this column so sigma 2 2 into sigma 2 into uh, delta l squared uh, delta l cubed yes delta l cubed okay you do this you will get your i y now um, then what else is asked okay so this pretty much um, this is the different moments of inertia you can find um, so in this there are we have defined two types of moments of inertia 
um, mainly the longitudinal and the transverse. One about the alternately longitudinal moment of inertia about the transverse axis, transverse moment of inertia about the longitudinal axis, and um, we have um, also, of course, there is also something known as that about the barycentric axis. Th three moments of inertia we have defined, uh, of which you have to remember this expression for i t, and you have to know how to make that table. Okay, then. Now, next one is a little simpler. That is, um, as I said, what is a uh, that is, suppose we want to find out uh, the del, that is the displacement. That is, del is equal to um, That is, uh, this is one expression for uh, del. That is the displacement. Um, so, A W is the water plane area. So, you have the total water plane area, and uh, that into uh, the this. Okay, at each point, at each water plane, you sum them out. You will get the volume. So, this also can be written as a discretized form. It becomes sigma i equals maybe 1 or 0, 1, 2 i maximum or i about t means i t represents the i value that is corresponding to the draft. We are summing up till the draft point into alpha i into a w i into delta t, where means instead of the previous case where we had delta l, we have delta t here, which is the distance between the different water lines not between different stations now, but between different water lines. Now, um, your question, I mean like I told you some time back, you can find the volume in two ways. Using the sectional area, you can find, you can sum it up like this, okay, or you can find, sum it up like this. Either way, you get the volume. So, so sectional area multiplied by the distance, longitudinal distance or the a water plane areas multiplied with the drafts, both gives you the volume. So, this is how you find the displacement. and um, Next one is now just the extension of this same as before that is uh, the moment of this water plane area about the keel. So, about the bottommost point you are finding the moment we call that the baseline okay the keel you know keel means the bottommost point that line we will call it as the baseline. And so, when you are finding the moment about the baseline, you are actually finding the moment like this, this distance, you are multiplying it with this distance, okay, going up from the bottom, from the keel. So, uh, this is MB, MB is equal to 0 to whatever is the draft, T into AW into DZ. Uh, it is not Z, it should be Z actually. Z into integral of Z into A W into A, actually you should change in this. It's not T in the text. Uh, it's actually Z into A W into D Z. That will give you the moment about the uh, baseline. Again, this will be uh, you can discretize it. In the summation will be given by sigma i equals one to the last value i t um, alpha i Z i A W i into delta t is it clear and i mean it's just and if you want you can you can do one more thing this z die can also be replaced the same way as we did last time we said that z for example we said that xi is equal to ji into delta l just like that you can have z i let's call it j itself it's but note that this is the vertical distance this time so j i into delta t okay we can write like this so, this will be can be written as MB can be written as alpha i j i a w i into delta t squared, delta t squared, okay. 
So, you can write it like this as well. Um, now, next uh, and in fact, the last one that is uh, that is to find your um, vertical position of the center of buoyancy. How will you find the vertical position of a center of buoyancy, which we called as VCB? It is the vertical position, vertical distance. It is equal to MB divided by del. MB is the moment about of that uh, volume about the baseline, and so this VCB will give you the distance from the baseline or from the keel. So MB divided by del. MB is calculated here. Del is calculated. We just calculated previously. So using these two, you can get VCB. Okay, then. So this is all mostly about hydrostatic calculations. Now, just some small things. So, what we have done is we have seen how to calculate basic ideas to calculate the moments, different types of moments and uh, moment of inertias we have calculated, which is again a moment only, second moment um, about origin, about the base, about the baseline, etc. E either way, you calculate the different moments, you calculate the areas, you calculate the uh, moment of inertia, and you um, you can calculate correspondingly the LCF, LC, LCF, VCF, etc. Okay, as we have seen. Then, uh, okay, so these are basically your hydrostatic calculations. We have done, we have kind of covered everything. Now, one additional thing that comes under the term that we used is we usually call it TPC. It it is defined as. Sometimes it is called as TPI, that is, it is actually the same thing tons per inch immersion. Means TPI tons per inch or tons per centimeter, same thing, not same thing, but it is different, uh, different um, uh, dimensional systems. Either the uh, so now, you, um, what is the meaning of it? It means that if you have a ship or a body floating in water. How much tons should you add to produce a increase in draft by one uh, tons per centimeter? One centimeter means to produce an immersion of one centimeter. How much tons of weight should you have to put on the vessel? That is the meaning of tons per inch, a uh, tons per centimeter. Or if you are talking about inch, it's tons per inch. That definition itself uh, describes it. So that is the weight required to put uh, to increase the draft by one centimeter. Okay, now we can look at it like this. Right? So, this if you increase the draft by delta t, your displacement will increase by this, which is your mass, increase in mass. Now, if you in this case we are going to measure delta, I mean uh, the mass in or weight in actually, then it should be g should be there now. Tons, no, sorry. Tons is actually kilogram into ten per, or thousand kilograms is one ton. Okay, so delta is in tons, and no, this is correct. Okay, delta is in tons, and uh, delta T is in centimeters. That is the only thing to check in this. We measure um, delta in tons. Always the weight of a ship. You never tell in kilograms. You always talk about in tons because it's easier. It's that huge quantity. Then delta T is in given here in centimeters. So once you have that, when you convert it to your SG units, that is, uh, so you will get delta will be equal to this is to do that tons and centimeter. Okay, that conversion when you do that, this gives everything in uh, meter and uh, newtons. So this is your expression for delta delta provided uh, you have it in tons delta is in tons and uh, delta t is in centimeters so this is called tpc okay so your weight is equal to tpc into draft increase in draft
So, just know this formula T p c is tons per centimeter immersion. Um, now, there is another term that comes along with this um, that is known as M C T. Okay, just like T P C, it is M C T is very similar. It is known as one meter. Is it one meter or one centimeter? I am not sure. One meter is a it's a large, but it's one meter. Okay, but it's that's so it'll be a small value. So the um, I mean, it will be a large value, moment will be large, you have to have a large moment to produce that trim. Um, so, but this is, uh, it is defined as M C T, it is, note that this is not heel, this is trim. So, when you have the ship like this, we are, we are saying what is the amount of moment that should be given to cause it to trim by 1 meter, 1 meter, this distance is 1 meter. So, if you draw that figure, let us draw a box, easier to get the angles. So, let us assume that this is a ship that is floating like this. Okay. Now, suppose that it trims, um, let us uh, it, draw it like this. So, this is your water line. Now, it trims, let us say there is a moment causing and it trimmed like this. And uh, the total length of the box or the ship in this case is L, let us call it LPP, the length between length between perpendiculars, it is the LPP, uh, I will just finish this and stop. So, this is LPP and um, suppose that you have caused the ship to trim by 1 meter, let us call this angle theta, we are calling talking about trim, so we call it theta. So, it has trimmed by 1 meter, Okay, it has moved by 1 meter and um, um, Therefore, um, tan theta is equal to 1 by LPP. Okay. This comes directly. Now, uh, we define something similarly uh, that is um, like we defined healing and we talked about the shift of the center of buoyancy in the transverse direction like this perpendicular which gives you the meta center, we have defined things like that. Now, the same concept you can apply to trim also, we, which is very similar, means it is trimmed like this or like this and because of it, the center of buoyancy will have a longitudinal direction also, means it will be somewhere here, it will be somewhere in this point. So, if it, if the ship heals or trims, the B will move correspondingly. Let us say it trims like this, therefore, B will move like this. The figure becomes exactly similar to that of healing, except that of course, it is a longer distance other than that there is no difference and these distances are longitudinal distances not the transverse distances. So, everything becomes same like let us say that initially your B is let us assume G is at the center and B is here. Now, B will move in another direction B 1, this is another meta center we call this meta center as longitudinal meta center. The other meta center we were talking about healing, trimming we call it longitudinal meta center. The mathematics is exactly the same, there is no difference. Okay, you whatever you have done for the previous one you apply here. So, it is not at all different. Um, but note that the length is very small. We this is 1 meter, this is the length of the ship, probably 300 meters. So, 1 by 300 is your tan theta, it is very small. It is so we are talking about very small values. Um, Maybe I will stop here. So, this is your longitudinal meta center. So, okay, I will stop here. Okay, thank you.